father don't want it to go, he can just stand up and say, no, you ain't getting mad, honey. Did her father give her away? So it's, as the Lord said, you're responsible. So even at the age of, what were they, 17, 18 years old? Oh, yeah, they're responsible. Oh, yeah, they're responsible. All right. So physically, mentally, economically abuses her. Is that grounds? No. What is that? Did we finish reading that? We didn't finish reading that. Hold on a minute. Moses, seventh verse, St. Matthew, 19, 7. Then said, they said unto him, why did Moses then command to give a writing of divorcement and to put her away? And he said unto them, Moses, because of the hardness of your hearts, he allowed, suffer me, he allowed you to do it. Put away your wives. But from the beginning, he took them all the way back to the beginning. It was not so. All right? And I say unto you, whosoever shall put away his wife, except it be for fornication, and shall marry another, committeth adultery. And whosoever marry her that is put away, doth commit adultery. Isn't that something? Now, how is that to be? Okay, you marry, you do put your wife away, and then you turn around and marry someone else who's been maybe free, clear, could be a virgin, never even been touched by a man, and you marry her, and you're not free from being that last marriage, you cause her to be an adulteress, and you are an adulterer, and you both are living in adultery. You cause that person to be. And whoever married the woman that you done put away, they commit adultery because she's not free. You're not free, she's not free. The only thing, the only, only reason, exception is somebody commit fornication. The reason being is because marriage is what? Built on what? Trust. And love worketh no ill to his neighbor. And you know that love ain't supposed to hurt the one that you say you love with. Amen. And so it is very important that you remember that when you do so, you do so what? Till death do you part. Amen. We got the newly engaged in the congregation tonight, so, you know. <clears throat> and then let me share this with you. Being engaged does not give you the freedom to shack up, try it out, get too friendly. Amen. What do you say, Ingo? No touch rule is in effect. Huh? Interesting, isn't it? That just because you're engaged does not mean that, amen, you are engaged. No, you are promised to be able to do these things. Engaged means promised to. You ain't married yet. Amen. Don't get too loose. You know, they, they have a tendency to want to get too loose, you know. They, you know, feel as though that they're already married and they can do this and they do it. No, 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 no. You can't do that. I tell mine all the time, you know, when you go around young ladies, make sure your shirt is in your pants. Make sure you are dressed decent. You go and call it, you know. Amen. You go and call it. Well, with your shirt all hanging out. Run around with little light old t-shirts showing all your muscles and everything and you meet. No. Put something on. You're getting too loose. Look at 1 Corinthians. Turn to 1 Corinthians, first chapter. First Corinthians, first chapter. First verse. Oh. 
Let's say 1 Corinthians 7 chapter. First verse. Now what? Now concerning the things whereof you wrote unto me. See, here's, here's a writing. This is a writing. So somebody else is writing. And some of you are sitting there questioning that haven't written. But it's in the top of your head. You're thinking about it. Amen. Now concerning the things whereof you wrote unto me, it is what? It is good for a man not to touch a woman. Is it in it? See, what happens is when you start touching, if you are the opposite sex, flesh begins to heal. You don't believe it? Put your hands together and start rubbing. Put your hands together and start rubbing. And the longer you rub, the hotter it gets. That's why the Lord said it's good for you for a man not to, what, touch a woman. Now watch this now. Watch this. Watch this. Second verse says, nevertheless to avoid what? Now when, when he's talking about touching, he's talking about, you know, don't be getting too freely that you feel as though you can put your hands all over each other. It's all right for you to embrace somebody, but don't stay there too long. It's all right to shake someone's hand. Amen. And just because you're engaged don't mean that you have the freedom to just, you know, put your hands all over each other and things of this nature. Uh-uh. It's good for a man not to. He didn't say that you don't touch. He said it is good for a man not to touch. To avoid fornication. Amen. Not everybody have the power to be able to back away when things get too close. And you keep touching, you keep touching, next thing you know, you're going to seek and find a way to get closer. Closer than you ought to be. And closer than you need to be. It's all in the book. Somebody done wrote about this. Amen. Can I ask a question? Yes. Because they are living like married people. I thought that I thought adultery means involves at least one married person. It does, and when you're living, it's just what you might say. It's just like uh, the Lord said, "He that looketh on a woman and lusts after her in his heart is what you guilty of it already." So if you are living together like two married individuals, you're living in adultery. Because in, a, in the sight of God, it is as if you are married in the outside of the world, but in the sight of God, you're fornicating. And it is pure and simple, none other than fornication, but because you're living together, amen, you are pretending to be married even though you aren't married. So you're living a lie realistically. Amen. And it's the spirit of adultery. Well, stay away from it. Get you in trouble. <clears throat> All right. You had a question. 